Hey everyone, welcome back to the Salamander Wilds, your certified herpetologist and salamander enthusiast here. And today we're going to just take a look at a quick update about the Shangcheng Stout Salamanders. And for some quick background on these, this is a pair of Shangcheng Stout Salamanders that were originally listed on Morph Market for admittingly a pretty hefty price tag. But that price tag in reality was actually very reasonable considering all the details surrounding this species. And so I covered a lot of those details in the first video that I did on these salamanders. So you'll probably see a pop-up in the top right corner of the video. Definitely go check out the video. It's really, really awesome to see how well these animals were shipped over and when I placed them into their enclosure. You'll notice if you have seen the original video that this enclosure has been updated since then. And so with that, let's get into the rest of the video. Let's look at these salamanders some more with some updated details and future plans. If you enjoy the video, please remember to leave a like, share, comment down below, please subscribe, and consider becoming a member. You get early access to videos. Let's get into it. So first things first that I really want to mention here real quickly and give a shout out to, you'll notice that I have this uh, really awesome label on the enclosure for my salamanders. And so I got this label custom made by Sticky Toe. Big, big shout out there. Check them out on Instagram. This label is seriously awesome because it has a ton of real world information, including the conservation status of this species. Now, the overall goal of this video is to document my journey in caring for this species. And the reason for that is this species seems to be exceedingly rare in captivity. And this Google search seems to be evidence of that. Because when you search for this species, there seems to be only four videos on this salamander in the entirety of the internet. And interestingly enough, I have to search for this species in two different ways, by its common name and the scientific name. And the scientific name seems to bring up most of my videos, so I really have to dig for the other two that I originally showed the first time I did a video on this species. And so here, my mouse is actually hovering over one of the best videos that I've seen on this species. It shows the stout salamander in its natural habitat, which I highlighted in the first video that I did about them. And just to really drive home the point on this, the last time anyone made a post on this family was back in 2020 on the caudata.org forums, which to my knowledge is the biggest place for discussion on all things salamanders. And so we can clearly see that there is a scarcity on captive information about this species. But we can also see that there is plenty of information on the species and their natural behavior in the wild. But that's why I say it's really important to take into account their natural behavior and natural habitat details and translate those details over into captivity and use those things to our advantage in order to properly care for our newts and salamanders. And this species is actually a perfect example of that. And that even directly ties into why I updated their enclosure. And so all that to say, I think it's very important that I document the care of this species given the scarcity on captive information. I'm sure I'm not the only one that owns this species. Clearly, I had purchased these from someone that did breed these in a captive setting. But other than the person that I purchased them from, I haven't seen any other information or heard of anyone else keeping them. Now, perhaps maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there are more people than I think out there that actually own the species. But if they do and you do see this video, definitely leave a comment below and Tell us about your experience in keeping the Shang Cheng Stout Salamander. But regardless, this video is to simply just provide more information and shed more light on this rare species. Okay, so I think now we're on the last legs of this video and I want to kind of wrap up by going over those updates and things that have happened during my time so far of keeping the species. 
Initially, when I made their enclosure, I used the same approach that I've been using for the newts that I own. And the main takeaway here is that I ended up using the same aquatic soil that I use for all of my other setups. And in the very specific case of this salamander, this substrate is not good for them. While this substrate has been perfectly safe to use for the other species that I own, such as Eastern Newts, my blue tail firebellies, Kaiser Newts, yellow spotted Lake Ermia Newts, etc., in the case of the Shangcheng Stout Salamander, these salamanders are clearly very different. Obviously, first and foremost, they're not even in the same family or genus, but these salamanders actually had seemingly almost uh, an allergic skin reaction to the substrate. I'm going to use the word allergy here, but I don't even truly know if that's what it is, but they did have a skin reaction to the substrate where their body broke out almost in what you could probably consider hives of some sort. And when I saw this, I immediately panicked. I didn't know what was going on because when it comes to amphibian ailments, especially salamanders, that's really where it gets very, very difficult to find information. But luckily, I was able to find a post about an axolotl that seemed to have, if not the same, very similar symptoms. And so I got to work, I removed the substrate, and now the enclosure is exactly why you see it the way that it is now. And since then, of course, now we could see their skin has cleared up, thankfully. And had that not been the case, the next step would have been the veterinarian. And so I felt it was very necessary to share this aspect of my journey with them so far, because in a hobby that I've always said that lacks information, and then you just add on a layer of a very rare species that has even less information, and then you just have this whole other layer of ailments where there's really not a whole lot of concrete information. I felt it was very, very important to share that with people in case they do run into an issue that may be similar with their salamander. Now, with that as a backdrop and really a major reason as to why their enclosure looks the way that it does, I'm also simply just now tailoring the entire setup, which I probably should have done from the start anyway, with just more rocks, more gravel to really simulate a setup that mimics their natural stream habitat. And so we can also see that the flow of the water coming from the filter is also set very high. This also simulates their natural habitat. And interestingly enough, when I first got them, they did go up for air quite a few times occasionally, but since I've tuned up that water flow, they have stopped going up for air, or at least I have not seen them go up for air anymore which would make perfect sense due to the biology of these salamanders and the way that they're built. They really truly are built for a stream habitat. Because while lungs are present in the species, you'll notice that they actually have similar skin folds on the side of their body, which is present in giant salamanders such as the hellbender, Japanese and Chinese giant salamanders. And those skin folds allow for more oxygen intake in their aquatic environments. And that would make perfect sense here because the stout salamander is in the sister family to the giant salamanders. And one last interesting thing to note here, I've read that salamanders in the Hinobidae family have a biphasic life cycle, meaning that they have aquatic larval stages and then terrestrial adult stages. It probably depends on the species, but I've read that all of them have this sort of life cycle. And seemingly here in the stout salamander, my salamanders opt to stay 100% aquatic. They show no signs of going on land. They don't use the small land portion that I've added whatsoever. So from what I've seen in uh, that one video that actually does show them in their natural habitat, they really do just seem to be stream dwelling salamanders. So anyone that may know a bit more on the species, again, feel free to comment. Let me know your experience and some of your knowledge on them. And with that, I'm wrapping up the video here. All of the information in this video is really based on not just the research that I've done, but also my personal experiences in 
caring for this species. It's been very, very rewarding to be able to work with them, and I really do look forward to seeing how they develop further. I'm going to be adding some more rocks and gravel to really, truly simulate their natural habitat. So you'll definitely see a more updated enclosure when I do another video on them. I really love the way that these salamanders interact with their owners. It's really, really awesome to see just how they notice you from a distance right away and come up to the glass. It makes working with the species that much more interesting. And while their aggressive feeding behavior is sometimes still quite surprising, it's actually kind of funny because I was told they should have some separate hiding places in case they want to stay away from each other. But for the most part, they tend to hide together and stick around pretty close to each other. And so really the only time I have to truly keep an eye on them is during feeding. So yeah, these are just really, really awesome salamanders, and I'm just so, so grateful that I have the opportunity to work with them and care for them. So if you enjoyed the video, everyone, I'm going to leave it right there. Please remember to leave a like, share, comment down below, please subscribe, and consider becoming a member. You get early access to videos. And so until next time, everyone, stay curious and journey into the salamander wilds.